Hi, welcome to the part 15 of this playlist. We are looking at some of the real certification questions from AWS Solution Architect Professional Certification. In this part, we will look at questions around these three topics. So this is a bit of a complex exam. The questions are not very straightforward. Hence, it is important to understand the concepts. So on this channel, there are so many playlists. So if you can just click this Straightforward one. Straightforward hosting is more affordable. <coughs> so in this part or in this playlist, you will see so many videos around thumb rules. Please visit them. So those playlists will help you with understanding the concepts clearly. Although in my videos, I will explain the concepts in depth. So stay tuned. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. And then there is this playlist where I have posted all the solution architect professional questions. So do refer these. There are several parts for questions 1 to 43. Now let's jump into question 44. So this is like, you know, you are using auto scaling like this feature which is used to scale up or scale down the ec2 instances you know why because you want to optimize performance and cost so suppose you have an application okay and there is a load balancer this one and there are three ec2 instances so no what happens is like you started your application today and you think these three will serve my purpose because these three we are able to handle 100 users you see this in red 100 users now one day suddenly these 100 users they become 500 users so what will happen so suppose this guy here this guy was able to handle say 50 50 requests each so max it could have gone to s150 now 500 is there that means load balancer says hey all my resources are busy so the moment they get 50 50 it allocates 50 50 here so it will allocate 50 users for our process. The workload is distributed. So your load balancer is like your team lead. He or she divides the work among resources. These resources are like team members. So this guy has distributed 50 work each to these. And these guys can only do 50 like in 9 or 8 or 10 or whatever is your working hours. You can only do uh, certain tasks, right? Certain number of tasks. Now, what if more tasks come? Then your team lead says, okay, then I will have to assign it for tomorrow, day after tomorrow. So, what happens is load balancer says to other users, please wait, boss. So, this waiting means your end users, they don't like waiting. Suppose you log into Amazon.com and you have to wait for an order to process you will immediately go to flipkart.com right because nowadays nobody has patience so you put auto scaling group so this ec2 instance if you know one person can handle 50 tasks and you have 500 tasks then you will hire 10 persons similarly here is EC2 instances auto scaling will create 10 instances. Okay, the moment 500 user become 100 users, it will go back to three instances. So here you have to do a manual scale out of using auto scaling. What should you use? So what is current capacity? See, remember one thing: when you set auto scaling, what do you do is you will put minimum number of instances and maximum number of instances in the desired capacity so if you see this documentation what you are doing is 
in the auto scaling group you set limits for minimum and maximum size and you are setting up the desired capacity okay so if you see desired capacity minimum capacity maximum capacity these three things you are setting uh, and now like our question says manual scaling so here what you have to do is you have to update your like desired capacity of the auto scaling group like in our example we could have told minimum is 3 instance maximum is 10 instance uh, or I can say minimum is 2 instance maximum is 10 instance in 2 instance I can handle 100 users and desired capacity is 3 instance because I know usually 100 to 150 users login so I am keeping desired capacity as 3 so this is my final answer see I have shown I will show you the documentation and uh, I have also explained the logic why this is okay so this you should remember this is very important and you can answer so many questions if you understand this this is a thumb rule remember this as a thumb rule now let us look at the next question it is asking the default cash port in elastic cash see elastic cash in a nutshell no? it is a caching product it has two things you can either use ready cash redis cash or memcash see before cloud redis and memcash already existed in the cloud world they have just bought them together so same technology is used in cloud world now where do you put cash elastic cash where do you put so suppose you have your ec2 instance and you have an application just like a website hosted on ec2 instance so this white box is the application now application will need to save data so we have put rds database here now where will you put cash you will put cash here here like this so why do we use cash because cash would make your reads faster but cash will not help you much with writes only reads becomes faster now they are asking cash port see for cash to work you will have to configure the ports because this cache has to talk with this person here and this person here both the persons so if you see this documentation it clearly says elastic cache networks on service ports default is 6379 and 1121 for memcached so this is the final answer for this one now let us look at this next question so here we are talking about uh, quite push notifications quite push means what like you are pushing something quietly like if you see a uh, traffic police he takes money from offenders quietly why quietly because he does not want to show everybody that he is corrupt though this may not be true everywhere so but the basic understanding we have is whatever we do quietly so that nobody else comes to know and only the person who is supposed to receive this notification only they get it so what is cognito so it is a user sign in or sign up tool if you come from security background you must be understanding saml protocols so if on your mobile phone you are accessing one application like amazon.com it asks for username and password just like this screen that is done through cognito you can also set up federated identity provider like gmail yahoo facebook 
uh, to because many applications you see they tell okay you have a, if you are a gmail user you can log in with that id you don't have to create a special id in this application so as a thumb rule you see cognito we use if you are putting your application on mobile like it's a access through mobile apps like uber or amazon.com or flipkart and you can use federation like gmail email ids facebook usernames and etc and it is uh, using saml you see this saml protocol so let us analyze this so a says if you push the message so it is only received by your application on user device that will not be seen by the user so this looks correct because it sends it in your application so you have to open your application and see it okay but if you see c option c it tells you that it will not be heard see there is nothing about hearing it is all about seeing is it is all visual d says it will send a message and and it will return user credential oh my god this is ridiculous it is a big security threat if it happens that way this is totally wrong and option b suggests that it will send a message and it will ask for users geo location so this is wrong as well it will not ask for anything so let us see in the documentation what is this quite push so it is a part of push synchronization what happens is see there is always an association between identity and devices like identity means cognito and the devices which is using it now using the push sync what we do is every instance of the given identity is notified of the identity data changes if something changes at the identity level it is softly pushed so that is called quiet push it is called silent push notification now we don't want users to view it okay and neither this will return anything back like geolocation that is why our first answer is correct because user will not see anything it is between the applications directly even if user sees there is nothing he or she can do so there is no need for users to view it so this would be the final answer please hit the subscribe and the like button because that drives a lot of content publishing on this channel so this brings us to the end of part 15 we covered questions linked with auto scaling uh elastic cache ports and quite push notifications this is also called silent put push in a nutshell we looked at these thumb rules so for auto scaling these three needs to be set very important and elastic cache it is made up of redis and memcache this is why we use cache to make reads faster and these are the ports which is used by default by elastic cache then we looked at push notifications silent push notifications and we know that cognito these three things are important okay with this summarization we end this part see you in the next part